Hey GED students, here's a really great example of how a very basic math concept, one I teach in the very first lesson of unit zero of the crash course, can come up in a more complex uh, problem like happens on the GED. So let's go ahead, take a look. And the example just says, find the product of X plus one and X minus five. And like I said, very first lesson of the crash course, we learn what it means to find a product. A product is a multiplication expression or it's simplified answer, as students call it an answer, but uh, it's a multiplication, a multiplication, whoa, not multiplied expression, you guys, I'm struggling. It's a multiplication expression, whether we just write out the problem as you think of it, or we simplify and write out the answer as you think of it. Now, so let's start with that. Let's write out what we think of as the problem here. Now, I'm asking you to multiply two things. Now, an interesting thing is if I had asked you to find the product maybe of, say, five and six, that'd be really simple to do. I could totally use some old-fashioned symbols, the ones we learned in elementary school, I could easily do five times six. But the times sign is not strong enough in this case. The times sign can only do one thing. It can only multiply, but it cannot group. I'm going to say that again. The times sign can do only one thing. It can multiply, but it cannot group. We have a stronger way of expressing multiplication that we start using in algebra, and that's parentheses. Parentheses are able to signal to us that we both are to multiply and we can use it to group numbers. And that's what we're going to need here. We're going to need that stronger uh, parentheses. And here's why. I'm not just multiplying a number like five. This is an algebraic ex expression, x plus one. And I want this whole group, the x and the plus one, to multiply. And so I need to put that x plus one in parentheses. And now to say that I'm going to multiply, I'm going to shove that up against another par parentheses. And I'm going to have that multiplied by that whole other group, x minus 5. Now, once you translate that vocab word product that we learned early in math, now we can see that it's going to require some algebra skills that we learned a little later. What are we doing here? Well, we're multiplying binomials, as we call it. Now, good news, you don't have to remember that language. If you never remember multiplying binomials, remember this, because this is always been true and it will always be true. Multiplication passes out. If I want this entire group to multiply with this entire group, that means that every term, every number adding and subtracting, so the x and the plus one, is going to multiply with every term, every number adding or subtracting in the next parentheses, so x and minus five. I have some passing out to do. So let's go ahead and do that. So x times x, I'm passing out the first term in the first parentheses with the first term in the second parentheses. x times x is x squared. Now I'm not done with x yet. It needs to multiply with every term, so I'm going to pass it out to the next one. x times negative 5. Notice that when I'm multiplying, I read that minus sign as a negative. It's easier to think about it as a negative when you're multiplying. So x times negative 5 is simply negative 5x. And now I finished passing out this x, but I haven't passed out the positive 1. And so I will do that now. Positive 1 times x is positive x. You can also write positive 1x, but that's kind of like silly. You don't have to say that I just have one of something. Of course, if I just write the thing, x, I can count. There it is. That's 1x. Um, and so I don't need the 1 in front of it. And then positive 1, let's see, I multiplied it by x. Now I'm going to do positive 1 times negative 5. You could do that with your calculator if you need to, but anything times 1 is just going to be itself. All right, so now I did the multiplication, but just like back in the day when we used to multiply multi-digit numbers, you know, we'd pass out the numbers, and then what did we do with the various answers we got? We added them all up. We're going to do the same thing here. We're going to add. We're going to combine any what we call like terms. That's all we're allowed to add in algebra is like terms, and I see some like terms here. This is an x term. 
It's some number of x's. And this is also an x term. It's some number of x's. Since I'm counting x's with both of those terms, I can go ahead and combine them. Now you might want to do this in your calculator because a lot of students um, struggle with adding and subtracting negative numbers. Because now that I'm adding and subtracting, I'm going to read this as negative 5. So basically I have negative 5x plus, and what did we say when there's no number here? This is plus 1x. And you can do that work in your calculator, but not the x's. Your calculator can handle the numbers. Negative 5 plus 1 is negative 4. But then you have to know what you're adding and subtracting. If I'm adding and subtracting x's, then that's negative 4 x's. Now you might say, well, how about that x squared term? Well, there's no other x squared terms to combine with it, so it's not going to change. And how about that negative 5? Well, that's a plain old number. We call it a constant term, but whatever. It's a plain old number. There's no other plain old numbers to combine with it, and so it drops. And now this is the simplified product. This is as simple as this product, this multiplication problem, is going to get. We can't do any more math, and so we're done. And I kind of always say that this is what like separates my A students from my B students. My A students went know when to stop in algebra, go home and drink some tea. Um, unfortunately, because we don't always know what the letters, we don't always have the power to find out what the letters are equal to. Like here, I have no way of figuring out what X is equal to. This is as much math as I can do. I can't do anything else. And so this is as simplified as it's going to get. It's done. Um, so... That being said, I just want to point out, like, here's this word we learned way back when, product, uh, but here it is being applied in a concept that's considered more challenging, multiplying binomials, but you have to be able to pull from both places in order to understand this problem, and that's kind of like how the GED is, right? If you only ever go through one concept at a time and never practice these mixed up problems uh, where we're pulling from various parts of math, you might be underprepared for the GED. So important that we get to these kind of more complex GED style problems. All right, if you have any questions about this or any other GED math concept, please drop it in the comments and I'll do my best to answer it.